in the last stream, we were working on setting up this rotation speed controller from the create mod to allow us to more easily and efficiently increase the speed coming off of our windmill bearing right here, thus allowing us to make things like these deployers and these conveyor belts significantly faster than they were previously without having to go through the big cog wheel, small cog wheel, big cog wheel, small cog wheel uh, monstrosity that we had set up uh, at the beginning of the playthrough. And basically what I've gone ahead and done between streams is uh, as you can see, I've kind of temporarily reset up these deployers and these conveyor belts uh, now significantly faster than they were in the last stream. And uh, I've also gone ahead and made one more precision mechanism, uh, but just to show you guys how much faster this is and how much it's worth having these uh, rotation speed controllers to set something like this up um, and make it so fast. What I would like to do right at the start of today's stream is uh, quickly whip up one more of these uh, precision mechanisms. So basically, just like before, all we need to do here is take the small cog wheels, uh, put five of those in the first slot, like so, take five large cog wheels, put those in the second slot, and then take five of these iron nuggets, put those in the third deployer, and then drop down our golden plate. And now because everything is so much faster, we don't have to wait forever for the conveyor belt to very slowly move the gold plate along, and then for the deployers to very slowly deploy each and every one of the items. Uh, it's just much, much faster. And hopefully going forward, this is something we can look forward to a lot more with all of the different aspects of Create that we work with. And there we go. We didn't get unlucky. We got another precision mechanism. Nice. Now, before we get started with Create, which I do want to work on in today's stream, I ideally want to set up an ore processing system to take all of the ores that we have here and process them using Create through the crushing wheels, through the ore washing system, uh, and into our storage drawers. But before we get into that, one thing that I would like to set up is over in the factory quest line, the first quest on the left here is for a coke oven. For those who don't know, the coke oven is a multi-block structure from immersive engineering, and it is used to make cold coke and also to make creosote oil. You'll see here the next quest is for cold coke, the one after that is for creosote oil. The reason we need to get this is because we need creosote oil in order to get treated wooden planks, and the reason that we need treated wooden planks is in order to get things like the water wheel, which are going to allow us to generate redstone flux, which is a power unit used by most mods in modern Minecraft. Right now, we don't have any machines that are not powered by the create mod, but going forward, we will get more and more machines that are not powered by create, and on top of that, if we really wanted to, we could also use some of the redstone flux power that we can generate with mods like immersive engineering uh, to actually power electric motors and thus convert that redstone flux power into, uh, into create kinetic energy. That's getting a bit far ahead of ourselves, but uh, the basic premise is that uh, we should get a coke oven. To get a coke oven, we need 27 coke bricks. And to make coke bricks, we need four clay, four bricks, and one sandstone. So. We need 27, which means we need uh, nine sets of this recipe here, which means we need nine multiplied by eight because uh, there's bricks and clay. Those are both just clay. Uh, so we need, what, 72 clay, I believe, here? Up until now, we've been getting clay by crushing gravel when there's a 5% chance to get that clay. Uh, that does mean that we have a little bit. We've got nine ready to go here, but it's not a ton, and it's nowhere near 72. Um, also, it's a pretty slow and pretty tedious process of trying to get clay. There is thankfully a much easier way to get clay, and that involves using our good old friend, blood magic. So right here, this recipe with two sand, and then either a water sigil or a bucket of water with either 50 or 350 LP can get you to clay. So we can turn sand directly into clay using blood magic. Now, while we could do it with the bottom recipe, we do need 72 clay, so we would have to do this many times over, and getting the water bucket and filling it up over and over and over again, I think would get a little bit tedious, not to mention, um, I'm pretty sure there is a quest back in basic automation here for us to make the water sigil, and we actually never used our arcane ashes. I remember in a previous stream, we got the arcane ashes uh, because I was going to make the divination sigil, but then as it turns out, you get the divination sigil as a reward for making the arcane ash, and so we never actually used it. So the way this works is, as you can see here, we can use the arcane ash to draw a circle on the ground. If we look at the recipe for the water sigil right here, we need to use a blank slate on that arcane ash and then augment that with a water reagent. 
This is made again in the alchemy table with two buckets of water, one sugar and 300 LP. That seems very doable. Sugar we have, water we do have, and we even have two buckets worth, uh, or at least two buckets that we can fill up with water. And so if we quickly head on down here, grab our second bucket of water, one, two, three, and we also need a blood orb, which I believe I did store in my backpack. And there we go, we had the water reagent. Nice. Uh, we are taking some nausea here, which makes me think we don't have enough LP in our blood orb. That is fine. We can rectify that fairly quickly by just killing a few uh, zombies here. So now that we have the water reagent, the only thing that we're missing is a blank slate, which we do have. And so what we need to do now is right click with the arcane ashes on the ground, like so. That's going to draw this uh, circular pattern. From there, we can right click with our water reagent. Like so, let's go change the pattern on the ground. And then finally, in order to make the sigil, all we have to do is right click with the blank slate. Like so, that is then going to begin this uh, animation right here, which does look pretty neat if I do say so myself. And then any second now, we get ourselves the water sigil. Nice, and we complete the quest for the infinite water bucket. And as a reward, we also get Sigil of the Blood Lamp, which for now I'm gonna throw away into my system uh, because I'm really focused here on the water sigil. So the way that the water sigil works is that it can be used to generate infinite water. In fact, right now, if we uh, right click with the divination sigil, we have 6,410 LP in our blood network. If we go ahead and right click somewhere with this water sigil, let's say right about here, it generates a source block of water at the cost of 100 LP. So you'll see we went from 6400 down to 6300. And so essentially now, if we ever need one water source block, we can just take this water sigil, right click, and at the cost of 100 life points, we will generate a water source block, which is pretty cool and definitely um, a lot more convenient than constantly heading down to wherever our unlimited water source is to get more water. Even more importantly, it does mean that we can now take some of our sand here, and if we head on down to our alchemy table, we can put in two sand with one water sigil, and of course our blood orb, and that is gonna to begin to generate clay. I believe we can just leave this in here, and it will continually generate clay. Once again, we are getting nauseous here. That is probably because we're out of life points in our blood network. Yes, we are. We don't have enough to complete uh, this process right here. And so we are getting uh, just a little bit nauseous. Let's kill uh, a few more zombies here. And then once we've killed the zombies, we can also uh, top up further using our sacrificial dagger. One thing I've not mentioned previously that I can probably mention now is that uh, I'm fairly certain that, uh, oh my goodness, that all the blood orbs are linked. So even though we have different blood orbs, they all connect to our blood network. So if I take, for example, this apprentice blood orb and I use this to fill my network, that should alleviate our nausea because this apprentice blood orb and the magician's blood orb in the alchemy table both share the same blood network. They both have access to the same blood network. So what we can do is we can put this apprentice blood orb into the blood altar and that will begin taking the LP out of the blood altar for it to then be used by this magician's blood orb over in the alchemy table. Somebody in the Twitch chat asks why we don't uh, use elevators uh, instead of having to use the ladder here, which is also a comment that I've seen fairly regularly on YouTube as well in the comments. The reason that I've not made elevators yet, which we do have, and for those who don't know, um, elevators, you can make two of these, and then when you stand on one, uh, if you have another above you, you can jump and you will just teleport, uh, which is a really cool block. Unfortunately, to make elevators, you need wool, um, and quite a bit of it. Again, we'd need two of these, which means we'd need 16 wool, um, which we just don't have right now. Um, in order to make that, we would have to have 64 string. At the moment, I think we have maybe like 12 string in total. Yeah, we've got 10 string. We could, of course, take some of our rotten flesh here and drop that on the ground. But uh, even if we dropped all 125, or sorry, all uh, 149 rotten flesh on the ground, uh, we would not get a stack of string and therefore wouldn't be able to make the 16 wool. And even if we did, I don't know if it would be worth investing all of our string into elevators when the ladders, you know, while tedious, do work perfectly well. Either way, we do now have all of the clay here. So uh, we needed 72 in total, which means we need 36 of that in brick form. So I'll just quickly do something like this. Uh, between streams, I did make some charcoal. Many, 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 many people in the YouTube comments were uh, very annoyed at the fact that I kept smelting planks as opposed to just using planks to make charcoal with the infinite wood that we have. And so I've gone ahead and made some charcoal. We're using that now as opposed to using planks. But uh, hopefully any second here, we should have 
enough clay and enough bricks, at which point um, we then just need nine sandstone, which I'm hopeful we have enough sand to do. Yeah, we definitely do. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Drop that in the middle. We can put the clay in the corners. And then once the bricks are done, we can put those in like so. And at that point, we get 27 coke brick. Nice. For now, we don't have a ton of space. I think I will end up making uh, multiple floors uh, around here. And also, I do want to make this area uh, bigger as well. But for now, I think I'll put it over here somewhere. And that almost seemed like we were flying then because we're moving just so fast and we fall so elegantly. Uh, but for now, I'll just stick it in the wall down here. We can always move it in the future. I just want to get this uh, set up temporarily because one of the primary features of the coke oven is that it is very, 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 very slow. Like, painfully slow. And so, real quick, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we do that, of course, two more times until we have a solid block of coke brick, at which point we then need to get ourselves an engineer's hammer. The engineer's hammer is thankfully fairly easy to make here. It's two six, two iron, and one string. Good stuff. And once we have this, all we have to do is right click in the center of any of the sides of the block that we just put down, and boom, we get a coke oven. So in here, we can put coal, and that coal will slowly but surely, at no cost to us, be transformed into coal coke, with the byproduct that we get being creosote. So if we do something like this, you will see that slowly but surely, and I mean very slowly but surely, for those unaware, when this uh, orange flame in the middle gets to zero, so right now it is slowly going down from the top, when it hits the bottom, one piece of coal will be turned into one piece of coal coke, and we will get, I think it's 500 millibuckets of creosote. Yeah, half a bucket worth of creosote. So I'm gonna leave this running. We will fill up this tank, and when the tank fills up, it will stop. But uh, I think 12 buckets is a good place for us to start in terms of creosote. And if we need any more coal, we do have a, a ton of coal ore up on the surface here. Speaking of which, let's get started seeing if we can't process all of the junk that we're getting in this chest here. Now, my original plan with this was to take all of the ores out using a funnel and a filter and send all of the ores to the crushing wheels with all of the smeltable ores, things like iron, copper, zinc, gold, then going through to the washing system to get washed into nuggets and then pulled into the system. However, I did see a comment on one of the last YouTube videos that suggested taking it one step further and setting up an even more elaborate system that could take care of even more stuff. For example, we're getting a lot of cobblestone here, and there are a few things that we could do with that cobblestone. For example, we could automatically smelt that cobblestone into regular stone. In a similar way to what we're doing with the ore washing, if you put lava in front of an encased fan, it has a smelting effect. So we could set up a separate conveyor belt with a separate encased fan with lava to turn some of that cobblestone into stone. I also quite like the idea of automatically turning some of that cobblestone into sand because of course if we put it through the crushing wheels once we get gravel if we put it through again we get sand which is something that i think it would be nice to have automated and then if we wanted to take that even further we could then automate the process of turning some if not all of that sand into glass to try and get automated glass automated sand automated cobblestone automated smooth stone and then we could even take it further as well and automate the smelting of granite diorite and andesite um, especially things like diorite and andesite those are used a lot in the creation of things from create. And while that does sound like a lot of stuff to set up, a lot of this should be fairly easily doable with just one or two fans. Because for example, the stone and the glass and the diorite and granite smelting, all of that can be done with one encased fan. We just have to make sure that everything is sent to the correct location, which I think should be fairly easy for us to do. Now, before we do that, there are a few things that, from Create that I want to show you, uh, things that I have learned between streams that I think are going to help us tremendously in today's stream. The first thing that I want to show, and I did make some more brass ingots between streams here. We've got 51 of those ready to go. And actually, I'm even going to go so far as to start making even more brass because I think we are going to need uh, even more than what we have, potentially in plate form as well. So we'll throw those in there. But back over here, the Create mod also adds brass tunnels. These are also fairly easy to make. The only thing we're missing here is an electron tube. I am going to go ahead and make quite a bit of rose quartz here because, again, we are going to need a fair bit of that in today's stream. Uh, also, one thing that I did not know 
but that was pointed out again in the YouTube comments is that uh, normally the sending process is not quite so fast. I believe the gluttony charm here is making it faster. So if I get rid of the gluttony charm temporarily and then I try and uh, send some rose quartz, it normally takes a little while to do it, but because the sending animation uses like the same animation as eating, when you have the gluttony charm on, it thinks you're trying to eat the rose quartz and it does it insanely fast, which is real nice. But uh, anyway, back over here, uh, what we can now do is make another one of these electron tubes, like so. From there, we can make a set of brass tunnels, and these are pretty nifty. I did also uh, smelt even more kelp between streams, so we do have some dried kelp ready to go here. Uh, let me get a couple of belts. So the first thing I want to show is that uh, we can actually split items using the, uh, the brass tunnels, which is something I was not sure we could do with, uh, with Create, but it turns out we totally can. So uh, if I get a little bit more shaft here, and we do something like this, what we can do is uh, we can put a belt here, we can put a belt here. Let's imagine that we have our funnel down on here, and just like before, we can put on this uh, filter, which is currently set to iron ore, just like we had at the end of the last stream, like this. So now this will pull out iron ore when we give the mechanical belts rotational energy, when we start moving them, right? Now, if we take these brass tunnels and we put them here and here, specifically when you put two of them together, if you go to the top and if you grab your wrench, you will see that there is a little tooltip right there. And it says when multiple outputs available, and then there's the option to split. And if we scroll, you can do forced split, round robin, forced round robin, uh, prefer nearest, randomize, or synchronize inputs. Those are all the options. Uh, if you scroll up, it goes back. If you scroll down, it goes down. So if we set it to split, which is where it's at by default, and we quickly grab our hand crank here, what will now happen is as we crank this, iron ore will come out. When it hits the brass funnel, that brass funnel should then divvy that iron ore up between both of the belts. The reason I'm showing you this is that, as I mentioned a second ago with the cobblestone, I think what we're going to want to do is have a brass funnel coming out of a chest like this, heading into a brass tunnel to split the cobblestone, and then we could have one set of cobblestone uh, go through and be smelted into regular stone, and we could have another set of cobblestone uh, go through and get crushed into gravel, then into sand, and then if we wanted to smelt it into glass. The one other thing that I want to show you before we get started here is the uh, the advanced filter. So by the advanced filter, I mean the attribute filter, aka the brass filter. So this is made from one wool and two nuggets. Again, this is kind of why we need to keep a hold of our string and shouldn't really be using it on elevators, at least not just yet. But uh, if we uh, quickly craft up some brass nuggets and then get our attribute filter, this works in essentially the same way as the regular filter, but it allows you to specify certain attributes of certain blocks or items to filter for. For example, if we take emerald ore here and we put the emerald ore in as our reference item, uh, by default, it's set to is placeable. And uh, if we hover over this um, name tag, by the way, currently there are no attributes assigned to this filter. But if we hover over where it says is placeable, you will see that the emerald ore has a bunch of attributes. The emerald ore is placeable. It can be crushed. It can be smelted. It's smeltable in a blast furnace. Uh, specifically for us, it's tagged with hash forge ores. The fourth one up from the bottom there uh, is tagged forge ores. Every single ore in the game is tagged forge ores. So what we can do here is while hovering over this section is placeable, we can scroll down to is tagged forge ores, and then we can hit this plus over here to add it to the attribute list, at which point uh, there is now is tagged forge ores. At that point, we could take the emerald ore back out, and you'll see that that is still saved to the attribute filter. So now, if we were to take this filter and apply it over here to this funnel, like so, this funnel is now set to pull out anything that has the forge ores tag. And uh, if you want to, by the way, um, you can press F3H to toggle advanced tooltips on and off. Uh, by default, they're off, so you just see copper or create. If you press F3 and H, it turns on the advanced tooltips. And now if we hover over copper, you can see it says forge ores. If we do it over emerald ore, forge ores, forge ores, forge ores. These are all forge ores. And so now if we were to start cranking this, any forge ore that we have gets pulled out and sent through the system which is exactly what we want. We want one filter that pulls out ores, 
And so basically, it just uh, allows us to more quickly and easily filter for ores as opposed to adding every single ore in the game to one filter. And it even makes the opposite easier as well, because if we do the exact same thing here, um, but with a blacklist, we can easily filter for everything that's not a forge ore. So again, if we get some more uh, brass nuggets, do something like this, take this guy, add in any ore, we could do silver this time, uh, go down to is tagged forge ore, and then you'll see here, instead of clicking add to attribute list, we can add opposite to attribute list. So if we add opposite to attribute list, it says is not tagged forge ores. And so now we could add another brass funnel to the other side of this iron chest, add in this attribute filter, and then that funnel would pull out anything that is not a forge ore. In our case, it'd be the cobblestone, the andesite, the granite, the gabbro, the dolomite, all of that stuff that, uh, that we're not really super interested in. But either way, now that I've showed you uh, those two things, those are the kind of the things I want to show you ahead of time here, uh, let's have a look at actually setting this up. So what I'm thinking of having here is our ore processing system on the left and then our other stuff processing system on the right. So for everything that's not an ore, we can filter with that on the right-hand side. Um, I think I am going to have to make the roof a little taller because essentially here, chat, my plan is to uh, move the stone generation. I don't want to leave this in the middle of the floor here. I think what we'll do is we'll take this, you know, the lava, the water, and the block breaker, and we'll put that kind of up in the wall somewhere, and then we're going to have the item splits. So we'll have the ores go to the left, down through the ore processing system, and we'll have everything that's not an ore over to the right, and then down the other system. With the ore processing system, essentially what I'm thinking of doing is getting two crushing wheels like this. So all of our ores will go over, they will get passed through the, uh, the crushing wheel, thus crushing them. For everything that's not smeltable, so for things like diamond, redstone, and lapis, th that's where the line ends, right? So as soon as they've gone through the crushing wheel, we get what we want, lapis, diamonds, redstone, emeralds, etc. Uh, and so at that point, we can then import them. So essentially, what I'm thinking, do we have a chute lying around? We do. I'm thinking we get like a chute that collects all of the stuff that comes through here. We get a chest like that. And then what we'll do is we'll have a funnel, and again, we're gonna have to make a lot more funnels, but for now we just have the one, so I'll <laughs> move it to show you. But uh, here, everything gets processed, so everything ends up in here, but we can have one shoot, for example, on the side, and this can be for our emeralds, lapis, redstone, diamonds. Uh, all of those will get sent through into another chest and then imported around into their respective storage drawers. Anything that's smeltable, so things like iron, copper, gold, lead, silver, etc., those will go through a different shoot a different funnel that again is filtered on the bottom those will go down and they will get put onto a conveyor belt that is in front of an encased fan so uh, again this is like a, a crushed down version of it because we don't have enough height but uh, those will get dropped down onto an encased fan like this with water flowing over it and then the belt can go forward into a chest when they're nuggets and then once they've been turned into nuggets we can then send them to be imported into the system into the compacting drawers that might sound like a lot real quick let me go ahead and uh, make this room a bit taller and i'll see if i can actually get this up and running so not too long later and i've cleared out uh, a bit more space on the roof i cleared out more space than i was intending to but uh, and i also might do a bit more clearing to kind of continue this pattern further that way because right now this bit of the roof is a little bland but uh, the basic principle of our ore processing is here so we have a chute at the top that's going to drop the ores into the crushing wheels and we do need to set those up with shaft we'll do that in just a second then we have another chute that comes down into the oak chest here this oak chest is where we're going to do our second round of filtering so we have one brass funnel on the bottom that is going to drop down all of the smeltable ores onto a belt so uh, let's go ahead and quickly grab another shaft We'll put that down right about here, and then we can put down one of our belts, like so. So all of the ores will drop down onto this belt. Uh, behind the uh, funnel here, we do have our encased fan. And so real quick, if we grab our water sigil, which I believe is over in here, we can then right-click just above the encased fan, like so. That's going to give it water, and so now when we turn that fan on, it's going to start blowing those water particles over this conveyor belt. What we're going to do is we're going to have another chest at the end of that conveyor belt, like so. And one thing that people did point out to me in the YouTube comments is that uh, it's going to be easier for us to just add another funnel here. So we can use the funnel as a filter to stop any unwashed chunks from making their way into this chest. 
Uh, I did not mean to add that extra one there. Let's quickly shift right click with the wrench. But uh, here we can add a filter, uh, another advanced filter even. And if we quickly get rid of the attribute currently on there, so we can just click the, uh, the bin icon. What we can do, we can throw in the iron nugget. We can scroll down until we get to uh, is tagged forge colon nuggets. We can then click the plus. And so now if we add this to here, like so, any nuggets will be allowed in. Anything that's not nuggets will not be allowed in. And so basically what that's going to mean is that, for example, iron ore gets dropped in, gets crushed into crushed iron ore, gets dropped. And then as it moves along the belt, it will slowly but surely get washed. If it gets to the funnel before being washed, it will just sit here until it's washed, at which point it transforms into nuggets, then it's allowed in. And then from there, we can use the simple storage network mod to import it into what is hopefully going to be compacting drawers, thus allowing us to access those nuggets in ingot form. That's the idea. We do need to add a few more funnels to this system. As mentioned before, we need to add one on this side. We're going to filter that for redstone, lapis, diamonds, emeralds, uh, etc. everything that doesn't need to be smelted. And we also actually need to have a sneaky secondary or tertiary, I guess, uh, funnel. This one is because a lot of the ores also output cobblestone when you grind them, or at least have a chance of outputting cobblestone. Uh, so for example here, when you crush iron ore, there is a chance that you get cobblestone, a 12% chance. Um, I think the same is true for basically every ore that you process. Yeah, there's a 12% chance. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, F3H again, because uh, as you'll have seen just then, the uh, the tag for, um, for ore right there, the tag for cobblestone was massive. Like right now it just says cobblestone, 12% chance. Uh, if we turn on advanced tooltips again, and we look at, uh, at the same thing there, that suddenly takes up the whole page and it says cobblestone 12% chance in the top left, which is a little uh, insane. So we'll, we'll hide those, uh, we'll hide those there. But, uh, but yeah, we're gonna have um, all of our ores go down, all of our gems go left, and then all of our cobblestone and whatnot can go right. I think on this side, I don't know if this just drops them straight down. I guess I can test real quick. If I put something in there, it does just drop them straight down. Okay, I was wondering if it dropped them kind of like at an angle, but uh, it doesn't. That means that we can probably just have a chute like directly beneath this funnel to collect everything that's thrown out like so. And then again, much like with this chest, we can use an uh, import cable from the simple storage network mod to import all of the stuff from that chest. Now for the cobblestone side of things, I'm gonna come back to that because as I mentioned earlier, what I want to do on the other side here is gonna be a little bit different. What I wanna do for all of the cobblestone stuff is gonna be a little different. And if we want it to be ultra efficient, we could try and use the cobblestone that is made as a byproduct. We could try and funnel that back in to our cobblestone processing system and turn that cobblestone you know, into stone, uh, sand, glass, gravel, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, by the way, one thing I didn't show you in the last stream, but that is very much so possible and, uh, and looks pretty cool in my opinion, is that you can use conveyor belts on a diagonal. Uh, there are specific requirements though. The diagonal has to be um, a 45 degree angle. So um, for example, if I put down like a shaft here and a shaft, uh, let's say like all the way over here, I can't connect these two with belt. If I try and do this and this, it's not gonna work. However, if I get rid of this and I put it at a 45 degree angle, uh, the way that you calculate that by the way is just it's on the diagonal. So if I were to put it like here or here, or let's say up here, we could then go from here to here and we have an upward moving or downward moving, depending on which way we rotate it, conveyor belt. So we could have items move up or we could have items move down. And so what we could do, if we really wanted to here, if we wanted to go uh, full on janky, but also full on efficiency, we could have a conveyor belt that starts here and then heads back up. Again, if we follow the diagonal here, we wanna go like up this way, we could have a conveyor belt that takes the cobblestone from uh, that is a byproduct, uh, takes it back up and then adds it to wherever the initial cobblestone processing system is. Speaking of the cobblestone processing system, um, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. Real quick, before we start worrying about the second half, um, what I do want to do is I do want to move this system up into the wall above this fan. I'm gonna put it in kind of just up here. And then I also want to look at getting our windmill bearing energy connected up to all of the stuff that we have on the left-hand side here. Okay, so way too long later, but I have finally managed to connect all of the items that we have currently in the system to the wind turbine. 
it took a bit of time and it took a lot of trial and error, but we managed to get there. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I've moved the wind turbine back by quite a few blocks. And then what we have, and I'm kind of going to walk through this just kind of as it goes. I'll start at the wind turbine and then move outwards from there. So coming out of the wind turbine, we have a couple of gearboxes. We have a regular, then a vertical, then another vertical, then a regular. This is basically just a little contraption to get the initial power from the wind turbine down into one of these rotation speed controllers, which we have right here. This rotation speed controller is powering this large cogwheel, and this large cogwheel here is responsible for our conveyor belts. So these three belts here are connected to this big cogwheel. So basically, whatever number we set here, for example, if we set this to 256, that's gonna cause these conveyor belts to very rapidly spin and very rapidly move items to their end destination. And of course, the opposite is also true. If we turn this right down to two, it's gonna cause those conveyor belts to go very, 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 very slowly, which is pretty cool. This is one of the things I did want to have. I wanted to have a dedicated conveyor belt speed controller so that we can definitely manage the speed of these conveyor belts. It's not connected to this conveyor belt. In fact, this one is actually not connected up to anything just yet. That is something I am gonna to have to rectify. But up here, all of these are spinning as intended and they're all going in the right direction as well. This one in the middle is coming forward, uh, the one on the left is going up, and the one on the right is also going up. That did take a bit of work. You'll see here that we have a gearbox to take the horizontal rotation coming out of this large cogwheel and send it up. And then you'll see we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six gearboxes up here. The reason for that, uh, if I climb up real quick, also I do want to point out if I press uh, my trinket key, um, I have temporarily replaced the rock candy trinket with this other trinket that we recently acquired, the spider trinket, which allows us to climb up walls, which has proved very useful uh, in setting up this contraption. But essentially, uh, over here, we have this gearbox in the middle is powering this belt, which is taking things forward. This gearbox controls this belt going upwards, and then this gearbox here controls this belt uh, going upwards as well. And then all the other gearboxes are just there uh, to get the, uh, the kinetic energy to where it needs to go. So that's basically our belt system. Hopefully that makes uh, some semblance of sense. It's mostly just a lot of shafts and a lot of gearboxes uh, to get things where they need to go. Then over here, we have, again, the power coming out of the wind uh, turbine. It goes into the rotation speed controller and then it goes right out the other side of the rotation speed controller. So over here, again, I do want to clarify here. If you increase this number, that increases the speed of the wheel. It doesn't increase the speed of the shaft going through. So this shaft here is still going at the same speed as the wind turbine, right? So the shaft that goes right through is not affected by the controller itself. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that down again temporarily. But over here, we then have another one of these uh, controllers. This controller right here, again, is powering this large cogwheel, which in turn is being used for the encased fan. So this number is going to allow us to make the encased fan very fast, or if we want to, very slow. We then have a vertical gearbox that goes up and then another horizontal gearbox that goes to another third rotation speed controller, the final one that we have for now. And this one, as you may have guessed, is being used for the crushing wheels. And so up over here, again, we can climb our walls. We can turn this number all the way up. Uh, I say all the way up at a certain point. Yeah, we're going to get to overstressed. So we can't go too high on the crushing wheels, at least not compared to some of the other things that we have around the base. But if we do make that faster, that does increase the speed of our crushing wheels, which thankfully are also pointing in the right direction. So now that all of that is set up, we need to actually make this work because right now it still doesn't do anything. So one of the first things that we're gonna have to do is set up a brass funnel. This brass funnel is gonna go directly onto uh, this chest right here. Again, I don't wanna put that down just yet because as soon as I put that down, and also it's a little difficult to move with these belts moving around you, but as soon as we put the brass funnel on here, items are going to start moving out on the belt and right now they're just going to go straight off the edge right they're going to go to the edge and they're going to fall which is not what we want what we want to do is we want to set up a system that takes the oars and sends them to the left and takes everything that's not an oar and sends it to the right for them we're actually going to use these brass tunnels that we showed earlier so earlier i showed the brass tunnels being used to split items uh, evenly amongst two belts what we can do as well with the brass tunnels is you can actually use these to filter items into different directions. So if you have an intersection, like we do here, we've got this where uh, one belt turns into two belts, we can actually put a brass tunnel on the end of this belt. So if we just right click here, that puts down this tunnel. And now there is a spot on each side to add a filter. 
So basically, once we have uh, two attribute filters, we're going to take one of the attribute filters, and much like we did earlier, we're going to set this to Forge Oz, and then Add. And then the other filter, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go to Forge Oz, but this time we're going to say Add the opposite. So now we have two filters, one that is tagged for anything that has Forge Or, and one that is tagged for anything that is not Forge Or. So what we're going to do, the one that is Forge Or, is going to go here, and the one that isn't Forge Or is going to go here. And so now, if we were to put a brass funnel right about there, items should come out, and things like andesite and cobblestone should go up to the left. Things like gold ore, and I'm going to take this off real quick because I do want to do some more work, of course, before we actually, uh, you know, put that down. But it does appear that that is working. All the ores go one way, and all of the, uh, the stones, right now at least, get dropped on the floor. So this is currently working as intended. You see the ores getting processed there. Everything is good. Now, we are going to have to add quite a few more filters here. Uh, we're going to need another one of those uh, attribute filters here because what we're going to want to do next is take these uh, gold chunks and if we put those in, there is the attribute can be washed. So we're going to add that attribute and we're going to put that on here. So now anything that can be washed can go down through this filter. Right now, the gold is coming out of the left-hand side. That's because this uh, funnel, much like this funnel, currently don't have anything set up to filter them, so anything can go out of this side, um, which is, of course, not what we want. What we want to do is get another filter. This time, we can use a basic filter, I think, this one right here. Um, and uh, well, we could use an advanced filter, but we are kind of running a bit low on string and a little low on wool. So I do want to try and use these, uh, these basic filters as well, where possible. But uh, essentially, what I'm thinking here, chat, is that uh, we want to take things like diamonds, lapis, redstone, coal, and emeralds, and we want to add those to their own filter. So diamonds, lapis, redstone, coal, emeralds. I think that's everything. I think those are all of the gems that we're going to get. Let me quickly check up in, uh, in the chest here if I can get there. We've got lapis, diamond, redstone, emerald, and coal. I think all of the other ores are smeltable. So if we take this filter... All of these things, we want to go this way around and into this chest. Now, initially, I did have this chest on the other side of the contraption here. The reason that I've moved that to the right-hand side is that on the left-hand side, what I want to do with the cobblestone that comes out of here is make glass. Now, initially, I was going to set up a system that split the cobblestone over here and have some of the cobblestone make stone and some of the cobblestone make glass. While that is possible... I think it's going to be easier and a lot tidier if we just send all of the cobblestone that's made in this chest over here over to a smelter that makes stone. And then over here, if we use the cobblestone that we're getting as a byproduct of grinding down these ores, what we can do is we can take the cobblestone, send it out to the left, loop it back around into the wheels to make gravel, loop it back around again to make sand, and then have it go around and over to the smelting area to make glass. I think that's going to be the best way for us to do that. It does mean we're going to get a lot more stone than we do glass, but in the long haul, I think that's going to be fine because we're still automating both of them and we're still likely to get more of all of them than we actually need. So over here, basically, my plan is to get one more filter. Again, it can be a, a basic filter this time because we're only filtering for cobblestone. Tick. Uh, actually, we're not filtering co for cobblestone. We're filtering for cobblestone. We're filtering for gravel. And we're filtering for sand as well. So anytime that there is cobble, gravel, or sand in this chest, that's going to come out this way. So if we manually grab, let's say, a little bit of copper here and uh, drop that onto the belt, that copper should make its way around to the crushing wheels. And should make its way down. And actually, we'll also, just to make sure that everything is working as intended, we will also grab a little bit of, uh, of coal ore as well. And we'll put some of that coal ore on the belt. Because what should happen here is the copper ore should get ground down. The cobblestone from the copper should get dropped out onto the floor. Again, we'll sort that out in a second. The copper itself, the washed copper, makes its way down onto the belt. And any coal that we get should make its way into this chest here. Nothing should go where it doesn't belong. And there we go. We have coal in here, we have cobblestone over here, and then we have copper nuggets on the ground. Again, uh, eventually those copper nuggets would get moved because right now this belt is not connected, but the plan is to connect it up to shaft power fairly soon. So now with the cobblestone here, 
what we're going to do, and again, this might get a little bit janky, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a chest and we're going to get a chute. Thankfully, we do have chutes lying around. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a chest down right about here and we're going to put a chute down right about there. So much like on this side, the cobblestone gets collected. What we then, I think, want to do is we're going to get some more funnels and I think I'm going to do an, a, a sneaky underground belt because my plan over on this side, if we get rid of a lot of this stuff, which I think is going to be faster if we use the, uh, the wrench here, but over on this side, we're going to have basically a mirror of this fan. So we're going to have a fan that goes in the wall like this. We're then going to have a belt that goes through the floor. And then we'll have a, a chest in the exact same place as on the other side like that. And this is going to be for all of our smelted items. So in the wall, we'll have the fan. It'll be like there. We'll then have lava flowing over that fan and going down uh, into the ground. We will have shafts, let's say here. And there we go. So that is kind of a mirror of this side. And so what I think we're going to do is we're going to have a funnel on the bottom of this chest. And this is where things get, might get a little janky and also a little difficult to, to kind of <laughs> wrap our heads around. But I think I want to have a funnel on the bottom of this chest that drops sand. So when we actually finally get to sand, like obviously cobblestone comes down, cobblestone's going to go around into gravel, go around again into sand. When it finally gets to sand, we'll have a filter on here for sand. That sand I want to drop down onto a belt that goes this way. And then I want, that to have, I want that to go all the way over to this side. And then over on this side, we're going to have a the, the sand come up and then land back on the belt, right? Uh, for everything else, this is basically already done. If we make one more encased fan, which I'm hoping we have everything to make, uh, we might need some more iron plates. Yeah, we need one more iron plate. We also need more andesite alloy. Thankfully, we do have the andesite and the iron for that. We also have all of the gears and shaft ready to go as well. So uh, iron plate wise, we do have some of those ready to go thanks to the preparedness of past Isaac. So if we do something like this and like this, we get our encased fan. We can put that down right about there, but again, facing forward like that. Uh, do we have lava on us? We totally do, perfect. So again, if we do something like this, that's gonna flow down over the fan and into that hole, perfect. Um, and so now, so long as we can give that fan some shaft power, which should be fairly easy to do because we do already have power uh, right here, we can just bring that along and over this way. So this is now working uh, on the back end here. All I've done is run shaft over. We've got two vertical gearboxes stacked on top of each other, one facing this way, one facing this way. And then that goes into uh, the encased fan that's currently spinning and blowing forward, which is pretty cool. So um, that now, if anything is dropped, it will get smelted. So this weathered limestone, for example, if that lands right about there, again, ideally you uh, don't stand in front of it. You do take damage, by the way, if you stand like in this area here where the flame particles are, but you'll see that is done and we get weathered limestone, which eventually will make its way into this chest and then get imported into the system. That's the idea there. So one problem, that's not really a problem, but one thing that we could take into consideration is that at the minute, you'll notice the particles here don't go very far. They only go to about here. And the same is true on this side. They only go to about here. Uh, the reason for that is that the distance the particles go is determined by the speed of the encased fan. So. Uh, if we, for example, come over here and turn the speed of this up to like 64, we should see those particles going much further. And the reason that's important is that the washing effect or the smelting effect only happens where the particles are. So what we could do if we wanted to is we could, for example, um, make another one of those rotation speed controllers for the lava fan and then speed up the fan to allow it to go further. But I think the easier thing for us to do is for us to just make these belts shorter. Again, if we move the shaft and put it down, let's say here, that makes a very short belt. But again, if we're going to be using funnels like this to filter what can go into the chest, there's no reason for the belts to be any longer than, than this, right? Because items will still just back up on that belt until they can get into the chest, which I think is completely fine. So if we just do something like that, and again, we could do the exact same thing over on this side as well. Let's take this out. Let's get rid of you, get rid of you, move that shaft to here, and then replace the belt like so. We can then shimmy the chest over to there, 
and we'll place the funnel down like so. So I've dug out this underground tunnel here, and this is where our belts, our very long belt, is going to go, like this. Uh, this is the one that's going to take the sand over from one side to the other. And um, I might have to bring that in just a bit, actually, now that I think about it. I think we probably want to have that shaft end, uh, the belt even end here, on this side. Like this. Yeah, I think that's fine. Now, one of the, the tricky parts about creates, um, or at least with the belts, is getting things to move upwards. Here we do have things moving upwards, but uh, for example, over on this side, we want to take all of the gravel and all of the cobblestone out of this chest and send it back up to the crushing wheels. Um, doing that with belts is possible. We could have a belt here that goes like diagonally up and then we could go and bring it back. Uh, that does work. However, it's a little tedious. And I think what might be a, a different way of us doing it is using chutes. If you put an encased fan underneath a chute, that uh, encased fan is then able to push items up through a chute. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a chute going up in the wall here. Like this. These kind of chutes should work. And we'll make it transparent as well so we can see the items going up. Um, I think what we might have to do because I want to have a funnel here to bring the items out. We're going to bring out the uh, the sand, uh, sorry, bring out the cobblestone and the gravel. But uh, that's going to then land here. And so I think <laughs> it's, it's going to be a little janky chat. But I think what we're going to have to do is do something like this and this. And then use like a, a hopper to move the item like into there. So the hopper is going to collect the item. And then once it has the item, it's going to put it into the funnel. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that hoppers can feed directly into the um, the chutes. And again, if we have an encased fan under that, so if we have a fan blowing up, which I think that one is, I think that's pointing upwards. Let me quickly check if I get rid of that. Yeah, that's pointing upwards. So we are gonna have to get shaft power down there, but that, that's fine. And then we'll put that back. We'll give that a quick right click like so. We'll put the hopper down feeding into that. So now all the cobble uh, is gonna come out of here. So we're gonna drop down. Cobble and gravel is gonna go into here and then go back up and get fed into that chute to get turned into gravel and then into sand. And then if it turns into sand, we want to filter the sand to go down. That sand is then gonna go all the way along under here. I think what we're gonna have at the end is another chute. So in fact, actually just to demonstrate, we'll go ahead and we'll take this top one here for now. And so over here, we're gonna have another chute like this with a funnel going into it. And again, we can make that colorful. And so everything's going to go in to that chute. Again, we're going to have, I guess, another encased fan underneath that one as well that's going to blow up. And then once it gets up to the top, we could, if we wanted to put down, I guess, another chest like so. And so the, the funnels will go and push items into that chest. And then we can have another funnel that then takes all of the uh, sand out of that chest, dumps it onto there. And then the sand, much like the cobble, the andesite, the granite, the diorite, the gabbro, everything else, it will get smelted, sent to this chest, and then eventually imported. So that is the idea there. Uh, to get this working, we're going to have to get many more shoots. Thankfully, the shoots are pretty easy for us to make. Uh, we are light on andesite alloy. But again, thankfully, do have andesite and iron ready to go. I think 12 might be enough. Okay, so again, a tiny little bit janky, but we have a chute that goes all the way up. And I will right click each one of these to make sure we can see into it. And again, if we use our uh, spider trinket, we can go all the way up to the top. Right at the top, we have a chest. Here, we're going to have the world's smallest belt that is going to go a two block gap. So uh, let's once again grab some uh, dried kelp. Uh, we are one dried kelp away from being able to make this happen. That is completely fine. We can quickly get one of those over in here. Um, I was smelting up the diorite, by the way, to make more andesite for the andesite alloy. Because again, diorite plus cobblestone equals andesite. And we need a tremendous amount of that uh, to make all of the andesite alloy that we've been using. Now, though, we can take that dried kelp, make another mechanical belt, and then have that go the very short distance from here to here, like that. So now... Once that gets rotational power, it will begin moving this way, ideally. And then from there, the only final thing we need to do, and unfortunately I can't climb like up this structure, but the last thing that I need to do, which I'm gonna have to do with like cobblestone, is stick a funnel down on that chest right there. We shouldn't have to filter that because everything that's coming out, we're gonna filter that one down there for 
gravel and cobblestone. So the gravel and cobblestone go down into the hopper, into the chute, get pushed up by the encased fan until they end up in that chest. That chest then pushes them out using the brass funnel onto this conveyor belt. That conveyor belt, when it's moving, is going to move the items over and they're going to get resent back into the system. So that is the plan there. Again, a little bit janky, but it should work. And then over on the other side, so once we go down here, we're going to have, again, the exact same idea. We have a chute that's going to go up into this chest. It's not necessary, but I feel like we might as well make those transparent. And then once it gets here, we're going to have a brass funnel that then pulls the items out of that chest onto that belt. I don't think that this brass funnel is going to block items getting dropped onto the belt. Although, you may be able to tell by my tone of voice, I'm not entirely confident in whether or not that's true. And so real quick... I would like to uh, to climb up here and then just drop like a little bit of, of weathered limestone or something onto the belt to see if that does actually land on the belt in front of the lava fan. Or if this uh, brass funnel causes a problem here. Okay, it does cause a problem. That is maybe fine. We can then do something like this where we take one shoot and right click it onto another shoot and that creates this diagonal upwards shoot i don't know if we can then make that transparent you can't unfortunately and um, but that should then allow us to move this chest to here thus moving the funnel to here and at that point i think we then should be good to go so now if any uh ores are dropped they should land on the front again it totally works so up here for this belt i'm fairly certain again we're gonna have to use some like cobblestone to build up there because we uh we don't have much like, we don't have much wall space to climb up. But uh, I'm pretty sure that what we should be able to do up here is very simply cut out, like, a hole in the wall. And then if we do gearbox, not there, but if we do a gearbox here and a gearbox here and then connect those with shaft, it totally works. Look at that. So that works as intended. And I'm pretty sure, chat, that if you don't like the look of just, like, exposed uh, shaft in your wall, that you can take casing um, i'm pretty sure there's m m multiple types of casing yeah there's andesite and brass casing and copper and shadow there's quite a few casings you can make but you can take the casing right now we have andesite and you can right click that over your shaft and that just hides the shaft it still works in the exact same way it doesn't change it um, in any way shape or form but it does hide the shaft and so now uh, anything that ends up in that chest should make its way out uh, and get sent around again so that's that taken care of i think all we need to do now in order to get this system functioning is we need to make one more encased fan. We are missing two iron for that. That should not be a problem. I don't think we have any more down here. We don't, but let's take a couple of iron ingots and just run them through one more time, this time with the uh, the plate cast down. That's going to get us the remaining iron plates. And then once we have that encased fan, we can put it down underneath this chute over here because right now there's no fan down under there. At that point, all we should have to do is connect the encased fan under here to power, the encased fan over there to power, to rotational energy, that is. And then at that point, I think it's just a case of adding filters to everything that needs filters, and we should be good to go. Speaking of filters, we are going to need yet more wool to make more filters, and so I am going to take basically all the rotten flesh we have and just drop it on the ground for now, hoping that we get enough string from that in order to get all the filters we need. We got 16 string. That's enough for four more wool. We are getting a lot of enderpearls. We've got 40 so far. Um, I think that might be enough. We'll find out. Um, I think right now we've got the filter here. We do need to add... We need one filter. Oh, no, we already have a filter there as well. And we have a filter there. So we need to add a filter here, a filter here. That's two filters. And I think that's basically it. I think we just need two more filters, right? Because we don't need a filter up there. We don't need a filter down there. I think everything is, um, is good to go. So let's go see. Do we have... The iron plate's required. We totally do. Let's throw those in to make that propeller. We can then make the encased fan. We can stick that encased fan over and under here. Like so. And then all we have to do from there is actually connect this encased fan and the other encased fan to shaft power, which might take me a minute. All right. Again, a little bit of time later... And what I have gone ahead and done is over here, um, we have, so here's our, our fan, 
right? There's our fan that blows up. So that's the item that moves the items up through the chute. So underneath there, we have a vertical gearbox to get the power into it. We then have another vertical gearbox here. And then this shaft goes all the way up and connects into the shaft here. So this one, uh, these two are our crushing wheels. Um, I was going to initially pull from here because we do have shaft power here. I was just gonna take that and bring it down to here. But this is very slow. Again, this is just the exact same speed as our wind turbine back there. So I didn't want to use that. So instead what I've done is I've pulled off over there because this is getting the added benefit of the acceleration that we're doing with this rotation speed controller. So it goes off, there's a vertical gearbox up there. It goes down through the wall to here and then across and up into this encased fan. So this is working uh, if I put an item in there, like let's say some emerald or uh, we see the emerald ore moving up. Cool. Uh, and again, if we go out, we can even see it going all the way up, I guess, through all of those. It might have made its way up there already, but yeah, there it is. And we should see it come over the edge any second now of that belt. Look at that. Perfect. So that works. Uh, and then the same is true over on the other side. This one is much slower because we're using this bit, which is very slow. But here, all we've done is, again, added another vertical gearbox. This goes down and then across and then up into this encased fan, which is being used to blow items up into here. Again, we're going to use that for sand. Now, the final thing we need to do is we need to get this belt here and this belt here moving. So what I've done, I've placed a vertical gearbox next to the ends of both of these belts, because again, that's where the shaft there is. So if we do this, we can bring shaft power up into it. And we also need to get this long belt moving as well. Now, I think that we can probably kill two birds with one stone here. If we get two more belts, which I have prepared for with this kelp here, what we should be able to do is add down some extra shaft partway along this belt. So basically, I'm thinking of getting rid of this big belt and also, I guess, temporarily getting rid of this funnel as well. We'll put that back down in a second. But if we add a shaft here and if we add a shaft here, this one's going to be a little awkward, but... What we should be able to do is make a small belt there and then we can make a longer belt that goes to here and then I get a shorter belt like this. Uh, this should work. If things all move in the same direction, the item should move across it just as they did before. And then what we can do then is we can take some vertical gearboxes, put those down here for this one and then connect that up like so and then put that down over here for this one. And again, once we get some more shaft, we can hook up this one as well and that should start the moving of these belts as well okay so chat is pointing out that i'm a fool which i'm, I'm happy to learn here because it does make my life a little easier um, because it turns out you can actually add shaft to pre-existing belt so if we just replace the very long belt we can then just add like artificial shaft here and then that should still work so once we start rotating that end which we're going to do by tapping in to this fast shaft that we have here we can then also use that to rotate the belts up on the surface and we can do the exact same thing here as well add in some shaft connect that up here here and here and so now back around here all we need to do is take some of our uh, some of our gearboxes we're going to have a vertical gearbox here we're then going to have a horizontal gearbox here and i think finally chat we're good to go. So we are overstressed, <laughs> which is to be expected. Let's turn this down a bit. Um, it is already, oh no, not that one. Let's turn down the crushing wheel one, which is this one up here. There we go. All right, things are spinning. The first question is, are things spinning in the right direction? They totally are. Look at that. This one's not, but this one is, which is perfect. Uh, that means all we need to do is we need to take this gearbox, make it into a vertical gearbox. And then uh, if we can get past here, we just need to add one more gearbox like this. That should inverse the direction of the rotation, therefore making that spin the correct way. And so now, if we go back up to the surface, this is going in the right way. This over here is going in the right way. Chat, I think we've done it. I think we've done it. So, what we've done is up at the top here, we have our chest. We've not even managed to reset up the all breaking system. I'm still holding on to the small block breaker, but essentially we're going to have the same setup we had before with lava and water making stone. That stone is then broken by the block breaker and then collected using an item collector. We'll put the item collector down like this into this chest. This chest is going to collect all of the ores, all of the cobblestone, gabbro, granite, scoria, diorite, andesite, all that stuff. 
everything gets extracted. So we do need to get a funnel. We're going to put the funnel right there like that. Everything gets pulled out. All of the ores go up to the crushing wheel. Everything that's not an ore goes up to the smelting factory. We do need one more filter, actually. We need a filter there because right now that's not filtered. It's not the end of the world, but that does need to, to be fixed. All of the ores get crushed down. If it's redstone, coal, emeralds, diamonds, or lapis, they get sent straight to this chest, and eventually we're going to have an importer that brings everything in to our storage drawers. If it is a smeltable ore, like iron, copper, nickel, lead, zinc, silver, aluminium, whatever, it's going to go down, it's going to get washed, it's going to get pulled into this chest in nugget form, and again, we're going to have an importer that pulls it back into the system. If it's cobblestone, which we get as a byproduct of crushing every single ore, it's going to go through to the left, down into this chest, then it's going to go over into this hopper, back up, using the encased fan to get crushed into gravel, which is going to go down again, make its way this way, into here. That gravel is then going to go through the same system again, go right back up to the top, down through again, turn into sand. That sand is then going to go down through, down to the bottom. We need one more filter because there's no sand there. That sand is then going to get moved along the belt, under the bottom, all the way along, up this chute, which is powered by this encased fan at the bottom, into this chest, out through this funnel, onto this belt, to be turned into glass, to be then sent into this chest, and then the same is true for all of our other items. Right now, there's wood on there. In the future, there won't be wood. There was a mistake that happened earlier in the stream. Normally, there's not going to be wood on that belt. Normally, cobblestone, andesite, granite, diorite, all that stuff goes straight up, gets dropped, smelted, dropped into this chest, and gets imported into the system. That's the idea. It took a while. It's a little bit of a mess, but I kind of like it. It's definitely extremely janky, but I think it works. I think everything here is working as intended. I am going to turn it off for now. Uh, by turn it off, I mean I'm going to get rid of this uh, this funnel here. Because right now, we don't actually have the import steps set up. So we do still need to put the imports on, uh, which I think we'll do at the start of the next stream because we are pretty much out of time for today's stream. Uh, but one thing I do want to do is I do want to get another filter because we need the filter uh, for sand. So let's do, let's get four wool here and then let's do one filter for sand. That sand filter is going to go right here. And then we're going to get another attribute filter. And then with this one, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take something like weathered limestone. Because I think we want... Actually, no, let's take, um, let's take something like cobblestone. And let's add that to the filter. I'm going to go with is can be smelted. And we're going to turn that to the opposite. So we're going to have a filter here for cannot be smelted. And I'm going to put that filter onto this funnel. So we'll put the brass funnel there. We'll put the filter on like that. So now anything that's dropped here, like cobblestone, for example, will go to the end. And then if it can't be smelted, it will go into the funnel. So it'll stay as cobblestone on the belt until it's smelted into stone. Then it'll move its way in unless stone can be smelted into something, which... It totally can. It can be smelted into smooth stone. So we are going to just make smooth stone here, which is not ideal. I'll look into this a bit more, I think, between streams. Because, again, we're also going to smelt granite into gabbro, which is not what we want. Um, we might end up just replacing that with a regular filter. And we'll just add all the items to it. There are not that many. There's maybe like seven or eight items. You know, glass, gabbro, uh, scoria, cobblestone, and just like granite, diorite, uh, etc. There's a few that we could add, but we might just end up adding like a manual filter to that instead of using the inverse of can be smelted because that does have some negative repercussions. Um, but this is basically good to go. There are a few small tweaks that we could make and there's definitely like a lot of work that I want to do in terms of making it look a little nicer. Uh, like there's a lot of like holes in the floor and stuff that I do want to fill in and stuff around here that could uh, definitely do with sprucing up. But I think, chat, that I am going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. Next time, we'll come back uh, right at the start we will set up the importers to import uh, all of the nuggets, all of the gems, and all of the uh, smelted items. We'll also look at starting to use our creosote. Uh, in fact, this episode has taken so long that if we come down here, we've actually managed to get 12 buckets worth of creosote. So starting with the next stream, we can start working our way through the factory quest line. We can get some cold coke, we can get some creosote, get some treated wooden planks, maybe start generating some redstone flux as well. We'll get the compacting drawers up so we can turn our nuggets into ingots and into blocks. We've got a lot of work to do, uh, and we've got a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of quests still to work on as well. But I think we have um, a very nice basic resource generation system up and running. So now we can hopefully fairly easily move on uh, to some of these other mods and some of these other quest lines without having to worry too much about whether or not we have uh, enough of any given basic resource. Again, though, for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.